go to the engine computer all right exhaust gas recirculation control circuit range so it looks like they're talking about the circuit fault code not really a performance fault code but what we can do we can quickly search at the bottom here on the scan tool there's a search search bar right so I'm just going to quickly do a search and let's see what definition we can get on the internet regarding this one. Okay, so Hyundai P0404 DTC. So it says uh, code, that's the engine control module detects, blah, 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 right? There's a couple of videos there. We also have um, down here, if you look, Hyundai i40. P0404 EGR circuit. So it looks like they're talking about a circuit fault code here, not a performance type fault code. Okay, so we will be dealing with the fault, fault code uh, with the circuit. Okay, so which data do you want to see? Obviously, I, bl I believe you guys want to see EGR valve data. So let's go EGR valve. So I'll just type it in up here EGR. EGR gas circulation actuator. We got ooh, too many, too many fault codes. Uh, sorry, live data here. Okay, so what can we make out of this? I will r briefly start the car and let's just watch how the data reacts. The car actually does drive. Uh, starts and runs pretty good, idles pretty good, so I don't see any issues there in that regard. All right, the car is running. Okay. <clears throat> We're seeing some activities on the EGR actuator. The percentage is going up and down a little bit. So it's moving from 0 to 30, 30% actuator. And everything else kind of doing nothing. I'll just go and rev the car. So when I'm raving, as you can see, um, the data obviously goes to zero, the percentage of EGR circulation, then it jumps, when I come to idle, it jumps to 100 and then comes down to zero, 30, 30%, it dropped to about 20, yeah, it's still at about 30%. Okay, that's what we're seeing. Let me go and rev it and let's see if other data do anything else. Okay, I did see the actuator position is going up and down as I'm rev rev revving actuator percentage. The rest of the data does not move. All right, that's where we add right now. Let me just quickly show you something on the scan tool that we can also do is, let me go out to trouble codes again. All right, so on the trouble codes, what we can do on this scan tool, this is Autel uh, Ultra. Maybe your scan tool may or may not have this functionality, but on the Autel Ultra, what you can do is you can go to this uh, spanner next to the fault code, right? And then you can go to data analysis and sometimes it gives you this factory data, factory information. So receiving ECM signal, DC motor type, EZR, uh, actuator operates ECR valve directly. ECM performs ECR system feedback control with the information of measured mass airflow. Okay, so it takes the mass airflow sensor information in 
to control the EGR valve. The roles of mass airflow in diesel engine is different from gasoline engine. Okay, there we go. There's a difference in, di in diesel and the gasoline engine for EGR operation. Uh, the computer has a different strategy. So fuel injection quantity is decided by uh, mass airflow signal in gasoline engine where when EGR gas contains no oxygen flowing into the combustion chambers increases the air passing through mass airflow sensor contains oxygen decreases that's a pretty good uh, pretty good information there so basically what he's saying is fuel injection quantity is decided by mass airflow sensor which we pr typically that's how it goes we know that when easier uh, easier gas exhaust gas coming into the combustion chamber right um, increases. So if you send the EGR gas into the combustion chamber, into the intake, let's say EGR valves opens, exhaust gas comes in, the pa air passing through the mass airflow sensor decreases. Okay, so that's a good valuable information. You can use that in the future for other diagnostic as well, I think. Thus, uh, therefore, with the output signal change of mass airflow sensor, um, uh, um, accompanied by um, EGR actuator, uh, EGR actuator actuation, ECM, ECM determine the amount of recirculation gas, uh, whatever that was, UNTT. I don't know what that means. Uh, so basically, what he's saying is, when the EGR valve opens, the mass airflow sensor reading decreases. So and then computer calculates that by using how much it's trying to open the EGR valve. So that's how it knows how much exhaust gas is going into the intake. So the mass airflow sensor does the monitoring of the EGR flow. That's what it's trying to say here. Okay, so when the DTC is set, the particular DTC we're talking about, P0404, the EGI actuator is wide open or wide open or closed for more than four seconds. Okay, that's when the DTC comes in. Um, engine running, uh, this gives you some, you know, um, some, um, you know, data. Their strategy there on detecting fault cause. EGI motor is stuck with opening or closing. Easier actuator motor temperature is high. I don't know how they know the motor temperature. Maybe they have temperature sensor in this EGR. I do not know. Um, fuel cut, yes, we have that file safe uh, issue. So it cuts the fuel down. It goes into limp home file safe mode. EGR is turned off. Fuel limit is uh, yes, and check engine light is on. Possible cause is EGR actuator motor circuit. So we know the fault code also describes a similar situation. We have an EGR circuit fault. Okay, that's where we at. Uh, let's go back. Let's have a look at the freeze frame data quickly down at the bottom. Click on the freeze freeze frame for that uh, fault code. So the <coughs> fault code is logged when the engine temperature was, let's say its engine was still cold, 48 degrees Celsius. Intake manifold is at 101 kPa, which is just at idle, I would say, because this is a turbo vehicle. It's at idle, so it's an atmospheric pressure there. RPM, engine speed is at 834, which is again idle condition. Vehicle is not moving, it's zero kilometer per hour. And we got, um, a few other data here, not really important, I would say. Maybe the mass airflow sensor data could be important, 16 grams per second. So that's when the fault code locks. So as soon as you as they started the car, the fault code has locked. So that's what we can find here. Okay, that's just a little bit of a um, scan tool check there. Let's go to special function and do the EGR test. All right, active test on the scan tool. Let's go active test. And we're going to look for EGR circulation valve um, actuation here. So 
So we got few few fault codes here. Uh, sorry, few uh, active tests here. Let me see what's on the special function. We got um, maybe engine test function. Not, not that one. We want to go to active test. So we got two basically actuation here. We got EGI gas circulation, which is this one here. And we also have a EGI circulation valve data at the bottom here as well. <coughs> so I'm going to start the car now and let's, let's see if we can do something. Let's see if we can actually do it, actuate it with the engine not running. Sometimes you can't do it. The engine has to be running, right? So let's let's try that. So I'll op I'll um, I'll open this active test EGR circulation valve five percent. Okay, let's do that. Engine running condition. The engine has to be running. There you go. Continue time until stop button. Okay, I'm gonna go start the car and we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to hit start, and I don't know what I'm listening to, but I can hear the engine is getting a little bit rough, okay? All right, let me try again. Stop. Uh, let me try again. Stop. The first time I did it, that engine was getting a little bit rough, but not right now. Let me go the other way and let me try the 95%. The engine is the engine is trying to stall. It's trying to trying to stall right there. Okay? You can see the engine shaking. It's trying to stall. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. Alright, engine comes back, the revs comes back good. When I did that the engine tried to stall and try to shut down. It was very rough. And as soon as I turn off the active test for EGR, the engine come back smooth. So what does that tell you is right now the EGR system is working just fine. That's what I can say because you're sending that exhaust gas into the engine and engine will try to stall because obviously it's exhaust gas, right? So the fuel ratio or whatever not is not, uh, is, is not accurate for the engine condition. So right now, looks like the EGR valve is working. All right, where do we go from here now? Okay, so, so far, looks like this EGR system is working. Josh, what Joshua has recommended, clear fault, will it come back? We can do that, but I don't believe it will come back. I think it's an intermittent issue. It only happens every now and then. But whenever it happens, computer will lock the fault code and put the car into a limp home mode. So that's what it looks like. What's the suggestion here? Uh, should we clear the fault code? Okay, let's clear the fault code, just for fun anyway. And But I'm pretty sure it's not going to come back. All right, let's go and clear the fault code. All right, I'm going to clear that fault code. P0404, so we will just maybe even quickly do a printout so I'll have a record all right I'll just print that out for myself now I'm gonna clear the fault code let's go all right fault code is gone let me try to read it again see if the fault code comes back the fault code hasn't come back I'm gonna go turn the car uh, cycle the key on and off and maybe even start the car and let's see if the fault code comes back. All right, 
car is started I don't see any engine light and the, the engine revs the engine revs good I got uh, all my pals and the, on the throttle you know back on the acceleration so let me try it one more time sometimes you have to cycle the key twice or start the car twice for the fault code to return I've seen that in many many cars they only they don't lock the fault code until you cycle the key twice okay let's do that this is the second time I'm starting the car let's rev it up and down no engine light so far all right I'm gonna just turn the car off now and go uh, sorry, uh, turn the car off now and then go back and check my scan tool again to see if the fault code has returned. Okay, the fault code has not returned. Okay, okay. EGR valve control. Yes, we kind of know already without looking at the wiring diagram where is uh, the control is coming from because this is just again universal most of the time. Uh, the two control wires for the EGR valve, uh, John, I'm responding to John's uh, question, EGR valve control. Uh, most of the time EGR control directly comes from the ECU. So there's nothing else we have to check for fuse or relay or none of, none of that stuff. Okay, uh, let me see if I can find a wiring diagram anyway. I already look at it and guess what? There is no wiring diagram okay here we go so I got the car selected right Hyundai uh, whatever that is uh, wiring diagram and we got nothing okay what should we do next this is the problem in Australia we can never find the information we need okay what can we do next any suggestion so that's why I like to teach a universal methods even if you don't have the wiring diagram, you can still diagnose cars. That's, that's my approach most of the time. I don't even like to look at the wiring diagram unless it gets really complicated and I can't figure it out, some complicated issue. That's the only time I'm desperate to look at the wiring diagram. But most of the time, seriously, I do not, I do not look for wiring diagram, none of that stuff. I try to avoid that because of this exact reason, you know. You don't know what type of car is going to come into your door what year model we don't know and we always not going to have the wiring diagram so john gonzalez uh, has uh, suggested a visual inspection joshua says egr position sensor can you see the valve uh, let's look at it i'm not sure where the valve is either on this system so let me go and have a look here all right let me try that the engine cover right so let's just pull that out <coughs> out the way okay so let me just quickly eyeball here where everything how the system is laid out okay I can't really see everything properly here um, it looks like there's an EGR cooler sitting at the bottom here below the air intake, EGR cooler. I can see the coolant hose and um, everything going in there. So that sort of comes in through there. The intake pipe comes up to the, sorry, the exhaust pipe comes up to the intake right here. Um, okay. So in my understanding, looks like this is our EGR valve because the plug and the structure of the EGR valve looks like an EGR valve. Looks like they they done it very cleverly. I don't know. I can't really see because it's so compact. I can't really see where all the piping and everything is. Looks like the exhaust, uh, from the exhaust, the exhaust um, gas actually comes through the head into the valve and looks like from the valve it goes to the front of the car again through the valve uh, through the head right there's no external piping I can see and then it goes down to the easier valve uh, sorry easier cooler in this area 
and then comes up to the intake manifold. Looks like that's the design here without taking everything out. Like I said, I can't see everything here. All I can see is this valve. It's got a big plug on it. Looks like one, two, three. Looks like it's got five wires. Okay, it's got five wires, which is typical EGR circuit. Five wires wanted me to do. So basically, that's the plug for the EGR valve. That's where it is. That's your exhaust, obviously. There's no piping between the exhaust and the valve. Looks like it's done through the through inside the head. Okay, there's a there should be a tunnel in there. Anyway, that's the EGR valve. Looking at it visually, I don't see anything wiring been chewed or mice been getting in there. Sort of wiring comes out this way, comes down. You know, I don't really like how it's touching that plastic cover there, but again, I don't think it's still kind of insulated pretty good. Then it goes, the wiring goes towards the front, and then it goes down into the harness. So doesn't really look like anything suspicious here, um, wiring-wise, being damaged. Okay, everything looks pretty intact. Go to the board quickly, and I'll quickly try and explain what we expect, and then we can go and do some testing. All right, let's go to the board. So EGR valve, right? So we got EGR valve. Let's do some. So this is a modern EGR valve, mostly on a diesel car, and this is universally, I've seen it on many EGR, uh, many car, diesel cars, it's the same system, a Navara, BT50 Rangers, excuse me, um, X trials and even Hyundai's today, it looks like it's the same system. Now, I'll give you a universal, uh, you know, ways of testing and looking at the wiring and, and uh, you know, getting to know the circuitry. But again, I could be wrong. Then what we'll find out once we go to the car and see what we find there, right? So EGR valve, we saw, we saw um, five wires, right? So usually I have seen they all have five wires on the EGR system. So, so we know the EZR valve, the modern EZR valve have to, has two components. One is a position sensor, right? So it, it will probably be called EZR position sensor, right? And then it's going to have an EZR valve, which is going to be controlled by a motor, right? Let's say EZR motor. And this is controlled duty cycle duty cycle by directly ECU okay so that's the percentage you're seeing on the scan tool that's the actuation percentage of the EGR motor the computer decide how much to turn it on and off definitely um, okay, that's a great comment there so what Matt has said is when you turn the ignition on and off usually the EGR valve computer like to reset it so you probably see some activities on that motor when you turn the ignition on then off or just when you're turning it on they usually like to do that resetting or whatever the computer does okay I don't know I'm not the engineer I can only tell you what I see so that's definitely a good way of uh, testing it but is that motor working we don't know that so for that one we might need a uh, need a, a scan tool or scope right maybe a scope that will tell you tell us the wiring is good the control is good and everything okay so we got um, EGR position sensor and the motor okay let's get everything out of the way only focus on position sensor and we're gonna focus on motor those are the two components we're gonna see on the EGR valve okay so let's talk about the motor so what does a motor need to operate a motor is anything is a motor let's say any components um, um, that's got motor on it you know um, pump fuel pump blower motor uh, you got window uh, uh, motor we got uh, cooling fan headlight bulbs you know all these consumers that use electricity to function and it does uh, it does something in the output as in if you put power on earth on a fan the fans gonna turn right if you put power on earth on a motor motor probably gonna spin 
If you put a power on Earth on a solenoid, solenoid is going to move. If you put power on Earth on the injector, injector is going to move open and close. So if you put power on Earth on a headlight bulb, the light's going to light up. So the consumer, the output, gonna got its job and it has a job to do. But what does any consumer and any output needs to function? It needs power on Earth. That's it. So it needs power, positive, and it's going to need an Earth. That's it, two wires. So two wires can function any component, any um, output or consumer, right? So out of five wires, we already know two wires are going to be our motor control for the easier in this case. Okay, and, and on a position sensor, Let's say go position sensor. How many wires does the position sensor needs to work? Right? It needs three wire. Right? So it needs three wire to operate. So what does the position sensor need to work? You're probably gonna see a five volt. You're probably gonna see another five volt bias or zero volts sometime. And you're gonna need an earth. So we're gonna need three wires to make a position sensor work, right? Two and a three wire. Okay, so that total of five wires in that connector, two for the motor, three for the position sensor. So we're gonna have an ECU, right? This is your ECU. So the ECU is gonna have three wires coming out for the position sensor. So we're gonna have one, two, and three wires coming out. Position sensor, I don't care how they built it. I don't care what's inside. I'm not interested. Okay? Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see a 5 volt power supply, which is going to come through the computer, some power 5 volt power source, right? 5 volt reference. And then we're going to need an earth. You're going to see an earth on one of the wire, which is going to go maybe, probably inside the uh, computer, the earth. Right? And then what we're going to have here is maybe 5 volt most of the time or 0 volt. This is a bias voltage. If there is a bias. And this is your reference voltage if there's a reference, right? And it's going to go in there and computer is going to do its measurement somewhere in there. Let's put a voltmeter there to do its measurement. And then if there is a bias voltage, you're going to have a resistor between the signal and the 5 volt wire. If there is a no bias voltage, there is no resistor in there. Okay, that's the only difference. This is a position sensor, typical position sensor. There's no difference to pressure sensor. Pressure sensor works exactly the same. And the motor, positive and negative, two wires, going to also be coming from engine issue, right? So let's build. Another wiring diagram here, it's an ECU, let's say this is your engine computer. You're going to have two wires coming out, and this is your motor. So what are you going to see, because like I discussed up here, you're going to need power and earth to operate that motor, right? So it's going to be power and earth, and I would say more than likely they will be switching. Switching between wires to move the motor this way or that way, okay? Whichever way direction they're going to move that motor and the valve. And they're going to have some kind of power source here. However computer does it inside, we don't care, we don't know. What we care is what you're going to see at the motor, okay? Now, once we know all this, we should be able to go in there and figure it out exactly out of that five wires, which one is our position sensor wires and which one is our ECU um, uh, which one is your motor control wire, right? Okay. Having a wiring diagram is great, but like I said, if I was doing this diagnosis myself, I would not even bother looking at the wiring diagram. As soon as I put some meter on it, scope on it, I already know which wire is for what. All right, I got my multimeter. Let's just start with the basic stuff, right? Just use a multimeter for now. Um, and then we can even put a scope if we have to later, if you want to. So let's go, what we got? We got 5 volt on my red wire. We got nothing on the middle wire. 
and we got 4.74 in my and my yellow wire so okay we got five red wire zero blue wire and another five on yellow wire now the middle one which is showing zero on the lead meter at the moment I'm pretty sure that's our earth so let's test that okay because multimeter is not gonna tell you if it's an earth or nothing they're only gonna show you zero most of the time right all right I grab my test test light put it to battery positive this time because we're looking for earth right so let's connect that to battery positive now when I find earth this test light is gonna light up just like that and we said the middle one which is our blue wire is going to be my power sorry the earth right there we go we got the earth in the middle wire so there's no difference like we always discuss on three wire sensor five five and earth okay now that's verified now I'm gonna show you this too so I got on those other two wires at the bottom right the red is my 5 volt on the screen you can see and the other one is a 4.75 okay if we understand everything if we are following me for a while 4.7 is my signal yes that's the signal wire 4.7 so is a bias yes with the your connector disconnected on the position sensor right right here with the connector disconnected right here we saw 5 volt on that solid that's our reference supply voltage for the sensor to do its job right we got earth no problem there we saw earth test light lights up but on the bias voltage we saw 4.7 or 4.8 something like that voltage there's a voltage drop of a tiny fraction a little bit even when we're learning they say look for 5 5 and earth it's not always gonna be 5 on the bias voltage okay they're gonna be voltage drop. the reason the voltage dropping is this 5 volt is traveling down this way obviously this goes to my supply but also there's a resistor it comes through the resistor and goes travels that way that's why you only seeing 4.7 there's a voltage drop right here on that register which is inside the computer this is all happening inside the so computer we've got a scope okay. there um, voltage level here let's go plus minus 20 volt that should be able to show us everything uh, this is only gonna be 5 volt signal for the position sensor right uh, let's go time base wise we don't need a very fast signal we just go one second we're just gonna do the same thing on the scope there's no difference okay so let's go to my first wire which is red one we say it was 5 volt let's put it in and you can see on the screen just above 4 volt right so it's a 5 volt now let's go to my <coughs> uh, second wire is the earth we don't need to test that because if you put that on that it's you're only gonna see 0 volt on the screen anyway so that's not gonna tell you much you need a test light to check that earth every time okay just zero doesn't mean it's earth always zero could means open zero could means nothing there so always use a test light for checking earth now first wire red one is a five volt you can see on the screen middle one is my earth and the third one yellow wire is my 4.7 and as you can see there's a voltage difference there as well okay you can also pick that up on the scope so let me go back quickly and I'll bring that cursor down it will measure the voltage for me all right right there we got 4.98 I'm not very accurate there but about 5 volt right there so as you can see there's a 5 volt up on the screen where I'm measuring let me bring the other one and I'll put it right there where my yellow wire the signal wire voltage was and you can see obviously I'm not lining up very good here but so this one's showing me even less voltage, 3.3. Okay, let's read that meter again. Even on the meter with the scope connected, you can see, right? On the meter with the scope connected, I'm seeing 3.3. 3 volt like the scope so it must be the scope dragging that voltage down 
let me disconnect the scope and let's see if that voltage jumps up on the screen quickly, right? So it's currently 3.3 with the scope connected. Let me, <coughs> let me disconnect the scope, negative lead, and just put the multimeter And then I'll just disconnect the scope completely from the picture. This is purely just the multimeter. Okay, 4.7, it jumps up. That 5 volt bias must be so weak, even the scope is dragging it down. Okay, so let's move on to our motor control now. And then um, let's see what we find there. All right, so. Basically, my um, intention today is, right, even without the wiring diagram, we can do all this testing just by looking at the wiring and the system. That's all my, because now we're down to two wires. We already verified and how they work and everything on that three wires for the position sensor. Without looking at the wiring diagram, we don't have a wiring diagram. We can tell and do absolutely without wiring diagram when it comes to sensor testing, right? Now we're left with two wires, the top two, which is my green and the orange. So on this one, like I explained to you on the board, the green and orange going to be my power and earth for the motor control. The motor needs power and earth, that's it, okay? Any motor in the world is gonna need uh, power and earth to operate, right? So how they're going to do is the computer is going to send power on earth and they're going to switch between uh, the wires to turn the motor on one way or another way. Okay, so let's do that. Let me just, I'll probably do this connected. But before that, let's just see if there's any voltage, anything uh, on that uh, EGR valve while the uh, connector is disconnected. Let me just see if there's any voltage or anything on those two motor control wire. Okay, all right. That is my green wire. We have 11.9 volt. And on my other, um, in my other wire for the motor control, also 11.89 volt. This battery is definitely getting weak. So both the wires has, let's say 12 volt. The battery volt is on it. We did disconnect it. Let me see. If it is actually a true voltage, can I put test light on it and light it up? If it is lights up, we know the 12 volt is, is there all the time. Or is it some kind of just the monitoring voltage, like a bias voltage? Let's just figure that out quickly. Okay, so I'm connected to battery negative. Okay, I got 12 volt on that. The test light is lighting up. And I also got 12 volt on that, and the test light is lighting up. Okay, so what's going to happen here is the computer is going to send power on both the wire and whenever it wants to control, it's going to send earth on one of, one of them wire, basically. Like I explained to you on the board earlier, that's how it works. Okay, so the Navara I did the other day, the video, it had earth on both wire at all the time when it's disconnected. But this one's opposite. It has positive all the time, but doesn't matter. The switching is the negative. On the Navara, which had Earth all the time, the positive is the switching. Okay, there's no difference here, really. Okay, I'm going to connect that now, and I'm going to back probe it. And we'll, let's see what kind of signal we get on the scope. Uh, channel A, the blue channel on my orange wire. And my channel 2, the red channel is going to go to my green wire in this case but you can see both sitting on the 12 volt mark 12 volt on the blue 12 volt on the red now i'm going to go and start the car and let's see what you got as you can see on the screen my scope it's doing its job, it's getting all the signal for me. Let me change that time base. Let me increase that time base a little bit so we can see a little bit better what's going on there. It's going to be a duty cycle, right? So that's how it's gonna be. The blue channel is, I'll just drag that down a bit so we can see that as well. My red channel is not 
doing much at the moment but the blue channel is definitely duty cycle there I'll just pause that quickly we can see it's a duty cycle so basically if you follow my cursors uh, let me just zoom that a little bit more so if you follow my cursors when there's 12 volt present the valve is not doing anything computer is not sending control when it drops to ground you can see it's zero here ground sorry let me go back ground that's how much it's it's uh, sending you know uh, power or controlling the motor so very very little duty cycle here compared to you know off time this is on time that's your off time so very very small duty cycle but the red channel has no control at this stage okay so now you can see the red channel is working so I'm gonna go and rev the car up and down you can see maybe both channel doing the control okay let me just keep it there you can see now I'm gonna go and rev the car up and down a little bit make a little bit of change on the EGR valve okay here we go I'm raving the car now you can see the both my both my leads both my control wires are getting the signal the control from the computer to control that EGR valve even after I turn the ignition off and on you can see it's doing some controlling there to reset or for the next time when the car starts whatever right so that's what we're gonna see on that motor control so so far I don't see any fault in the circuitry of the EGR system position sensor is good motor control is good I would say this is purely gonna be an EGR intermittent issue because the fault code hasn't come back right so it's definitely going to be a EGR issue the customer is gonna need a new EGR valve in this car okay let me just quickly go and see if my fault code has returned uh, we've been starting and running this car a little bit so let's just read that fault code again yes my fault code has come back but I think we set that fault code by disconnecting that sensor see how it says sensor A circuit high so it's showing me uh, the the uh, it's showing me the position sensor fault code which is we created that fault code so ignore that fault code uh, EGR sensor A circuit high so sensor A must be the position sensor we can quickly search it and see what the sensor A means right we can google that real quick sometimes Cantle don't give you the proper meaning of the fault codes and sometimes you can't find it on the Google as well so that's the fun part about diagnosing you never know what extent you have to go to diagnose cars sometimes okay there's nothing here I can really see quickly so we can also go to our DTC analysis let's see what it says um, okay right here you can read right DTC information P0406 is set when feedback easier valve position is out of low limit so that's exactly right so that's setting a fault code for position sensor you can read right there on the DTC so even if the scan tool says circuit uh, A the, uh, we don't know what A sensor A means but the description if you go into the scan tool data analysis or DTC analysis you can sometimes find that information you got an EGR valve problem car come in and you um, you want to you know diagnose the car obviously you just want to quickly verify if the exhaust gas is getting into the intake through the EGR valve meaning if the EGR valve is opening uh, and it's letting the air there's no restriction in the piping or the tunnel of the EGR valve and it's getting into the uh, it's getting into the intake manifold into the engine how can you quickly tell that okay so this is what I've experienced before I go last tip 
uh, run the car, obviously get it up to the temperature, whatever not, rev it up and down, especially at idle when the engine is running. So every now and then as the car is idling, sitting idling, the EGR valve is going to open and close at times, right? So whenever the EGR valve opens, what you're going to hear in the engine is the engine notes change. The engine's going to have a, like a, a, how can I make this noise, like a, you'll physically hear it like a kind of like a, it will have that tone in the noise of the engine and as soon as the engine EGR valve closes the engine noise goes back to the previous stage as in normal so just look for that next time run the car when the EGR valve opens it will go like a the note of the engine the sound um, the thickness in the sound of the engine changes when the EGR valve is open. That means that EGR gas is getting into the engine. Nothing wrong with the passes. Everything should be, you know, clean. You can assume that. Okay, that's one tip. Um, if you want to quickly verify if the EGR valve open and the gas is getting to the engine. Okay, saying all that, thank you so much, everyone. I will catch you next time. Uh, maybe tomorrow night I got an ABS to diagnose. Let's see how it goes here.